Alright, in this video we will show you how to repair an LG Flattron L226WTQ-BP that is having power problems. This particular unit came into our shop, has no power at all. Push the power button, you get no light, no flickering, no backlight flashing, totally dead. Um, so we're going to show you how to take it apart and uh, do the power supply repair on it, get it back up and running. Um, first thing you need to do is, of course, remove your power cable and your video cable. Then remove your stand by removing the four screws. On some units, you will also have four screws in the VESA mounting uh, holes where you would mount it to like a wall mounting bracket or a uh, multi-monitor desk stand. So you want to remove those four while you're taking the screws out. You want to lay the unit down grab the center of the bottom bezel, lift it up and twist slightly and you'll hear it start popping loose the plastic catches that are around the perimeter of the monitor. Once you get it lifted up a little bit you just want to work your way around, go to the end, do the same type thing, make sure the corners pop loose and work your way around the monitor. by the power supply, by the power switch, you just pop it up and then you're finished. And before you pull the front panel off, we need to turn the unit over because you actually take the back of it off first. So we'll just turn the unit over and remove the back of the case. Now you can see the RF shielding that covers the video control portion and the power supply portion. Um, so we'll show you how to take off this shielding to get to the power supply that we'll, we will be working with. First thing you need to do is remove the RF shielding. It's held in place by a couple of pieces of tape and then clips into these metal brackets. So you want to lift it up a little bit and just take off the tape. Set that bracket to the side. We'll have to get back to that. Put that on when we're finishing with the monitor. Next thing you'll see is the four backlight plugs. We will need to remove those. They are held in with a little plastic so you need to squeeze and then pull and they will come right off and add a little sockets. I want to remove all four of those. Next thing we'll need to do on the opposite end you have a blue and gray cable that comes out that goes to the front control panel. This is the um, power switch and indicators cable. You need to disconnect it and unplug it from the front control panel and then just pull it out from underneath the tape. You can put the tape back to hold the cable back in when we're finished. Now we're ready to lift the assembly up slightly and you will see the cable that goes from the video control board to the LCD panel. That cable goes through this little uh, cable management. You just kind of want to work those cables through and free it up so we have a little bit of extra play on the cable. Now that we have it free of that, then you can rotate and lay it down flat. This is the power supply board that we will be removing to do the repair on. It's held in place by four screws. Need to remove those four, the standard Phillips screws. board. First thing we'll need to do is disconnect the power connection. It's again a squeeze and release plug. And then we also have the power out from the power supply going to the video controller. It's again a squeeze and release plug. So you just squeeze it and work it free. Now we have the power supply out. Um, four very visible bulges on the tops of these capacitors. Um, when one capacitor goes out, it stresses the other capacitors, and so a lot of times you'll see multiple capacitors that have bulges in the power supply. This particular one does not show a bulge, but it needs to be replaced too, because I was, as I was saying, the stresses that cause the other ones to fail 
this one has been really stressed because there's now four capacitors that have failed in the filter and if you replace just these four within a very short amount of time that one would go also so while you have the unit disassembled it's best to go ahead and replace all five of them at one time now we'll take it over to our uh, solder station and do the repair work on it and see if we can get the monitor back up and running <laughs>